In this video, we're going to run over 38 quickfire bits of information you might not know about Crisis Core, the prequel to Final Fantasy VII, which originally appeared on the PSP in 2007, and which was finally remastered and re-released in 2022. Or maybe you did actually know these things about the game already. Either way, let's go over these nuggets of information anyway. Because why not? The details mentioned in this video are pulled from various different sources, which I'll go through one by one starting with information from the Crisis Core Ultimania that was published in 2007. Firstly, Zack was actually supposed to be able to use Blade Beam, one of Cloud's limit breaks in Final Fantasy VII. Zack's version would have been able to lock onto and track multiple targets. However, even though he didn't get to use it in Crisis Core, Zack did get to show off Blade Beam in the Last Order anime. On the topic of combat, in the early stages of the game's development, it was planned that Zack would be able to use martial arts in battle. The developers even went as far as creating animations for the attacks, but they had to be dropped from the game because of memory constraints. Speaking of memory constraints, as the scale of the project grew, the game became too long to fit onto just one UMD. As such, a proposal for two was made, but rejected, meaning that the final scenario for Crisis Core had to essentially be a digest version. Tetsuya Nomura wanted Sephiroth, Genesis and Anjil to have different varieties of wings to convey different things. Anjil's wings are white to symbolize that he didn't go down a dark path, and Sephiroth could have been the same, but obviously took a different path. Kazushiga Nojima was the person who decided that Zack should fall into the church, in the same way that Cloud did in Final Fantasy VII. He also wanted to link some of Aerith's traits, depicted in Final Fantasy VII, to those shown by Zack in Crisis Core notably such as using his famous one-date line. On that topic, Nojima said that it wasn't his intention to show if Zack's affections wavered between Cisne and Aerith. Instead, Cisne was there to help encourage Zack when he was down, even though she may have been lonely and troubled herself. Takuji Sasaki, Crisis Core's character texture director, pointed out that when you look closely at one of Aerith's flower wagons, you'll see a small doodle on it, which he imagines was done either by her or Zack. Originally, Minerva was going to be the final summon that you could get in Crisis Core, and would have only been shown in the game's FMVs. However, as with certain other plans, this was dropped because of the UMD's memory constraints, which is why she was added as the super boss instead. Nojima said he chose to make Lazard soldier's director, rather than Heidegger, because he couldn't imagine Sephiroth obeying orders from him. And to be honest, neither can I. It was planned that the words Zack uses in battle would change after he become a first-class soldier. As such, two tracks were recorded, one for first class and one for second class. However, only one of them could be used, again thanks to limitations of the UMD, meaning that the second-class battle dialogue had to be dropped. On the subject of changes that happened during Crisis Core, Nomura chose to alter Zack's hair in order to show his character development. However, there were issues when it came to communicating this with production staff, meaning that there was some concern about whether or not his hair would be changed by the time it released. Similarly, another change that takes place regards the music that plays in the Shinra building itself, which changes to the more familiar Shinra theme later on in Crisis Core. This is done to reflect not only the way that the company is viewed by people on the outside, but also that Zack's heart has abandoned Shinra, following Anjil's death. Jillian was offered hush money by Shinra, but she turned down the compensation because she wanted to distance herself from the company and from her past working as a Shinra scientist. This was despite her family being poor and her husband being ill. Speaking of Jillian, she claims that Genesis is unable to harm her. This is because he considers her knowledge valuable for helping to stop his degradation, given that she was involved in his birth while working as a Shinra scientist. Genesis asks her to help him with a cure, but instead she decides to take her own life. Regarding Genesis, his screen time in Crisis Core actually increased a lot from what was initially planned for his involvement in the project. This is because Hideki Imaizumi, the game's producer, wanted him to be added into many more scenes, and convinced Nojima to move parts of Genesis' story into the latter part of Crisis Core. There were also plans for Genesis to play the piano in the game before the character was instead turned into someone who quotes poetry. Other plans? which were also rejected for being overly dramatic, included having him play a reed flute whenever he appeared on screen. 
During the emotional ending of Crisis Core, Cloud coming out of his coma and rising to his feet is an indication of Sephiroth's imminent return. This is because, in the same way that Genesis copies stopped moving during Genesis's absence, as a Sephiroth copy following Hojo's experimentation, Cloud also remains in a coma while Sephiroth is absent. The rain that's falling during the game's final moments stops by the time Cloud thanks Zack. This was not just a way of showing the passage of time, but also symbolic of how Zack's memories have now been imprinted on Cloud. As such, with Cloud wanting to hide parts of his true self away, the Genova cells within him formed a personality based on Zack, due to their ability to copy others. After meeting Cloud, Aerith comes to be surprised by the way he has the same bearing and mannerisms as Zack. Now, let's move on to interesting details that can be found in the Crisis Core Complete Guide, which was published in 2008. It stated that Sephiroth has been engaged in battles on the front line since before he was even 10 years of age, thanks to his combat ability which is greater than that of any other soldier first class. It's clear that he's the world's strongest warrior. Also. Sephiroth's fan club in Crisis Core has been around for more than 20 years. The club's chairperson apparently has the initial H, writes like a scientist would, and has access to the Shinra building, allowing them to get access to private information about Sephiroth. Now who could that be? Also on the subject of Sephiroth, he came to regard Genesis and Angeal as the first friends in his life, despite not having much time for other people. During the events of Crisis Core, he also began to see Zack as a new friend. A young man called Emilio, who can be spoken to in the Sector 5 slums, will mention that he has a girl back home that he writes to. It turns out that he's the son of the general store owner in Nibelheim, and the girl he's referring to is Tifa. However, she isn't actually his girlfriend. The white feather that appears in front of the church is a sign that Aerith spoke with Angeal during the events of Crisis Core. He believed he had to protect her for Zack's peace of mind, which explains why an Angeal copy shows up there later on. Yuffie claims that a man with blonde hair gave her father information and email addresses from soldier at the end of the Wutai War. That man could either be Lazard or Rufus. Anjil acted on his own will after rediscovering his soldier honor, which influenced Lazard's actions as an Anjil copy later on. Lazard's wish to get revenge against his father, President Shinra, was instead replaced by Anjil's desires. G-type soldiers are badly impacted by degradation with their skin and skeletal structure rotting because of decreased healing ability. It also causes them to become more dangerous and irrational, like unleashed monsters. Crisis Core's developers said that Zack's strong resolve is symbolized by his mental landscape. The blue sky represents Zack in his most complete state, while the white feathers represent Angeal and his wings of freedom. Aerith, meanwhile, is represented by the water's surface, with her consciousness flowing through the life stream. One flies away. One is captured, and one becomes a hero. From Loveless is based on the idea that Angeal is the one who flew away. Genesis became the prisoner, and of course that Zack became a hero. Near the end of Crisis Core, Zack asks Genesis if he knew from the beginning, referring to Genesis's plan to reenact Loveless, but with himself as the hero. When Genesis says, the dream came true, it's in reference to his dream to serve his apples to Sephiroth. In turn, Zack's reply, sorry I'm not the real thing, refers to him and Cloud being Sephiroth copies at that point. Tetsuya Nomura has said that this is one of his favorite scenes. The following snippets of information come from a few different sources, namely Famitsu, Dengeki, IGN, and the Final Fantasy VII 10th Anniversary Ultimania. In issue 396 of Dengeki PlayStation Magazine, Yoshinori Kitazi said that Fair was actually one of three potential possibilities for Zack's last name. Kitasi wanted to call him Zack Sunflower, but the team instead chose a name more related to weather. Although, as you can see from Zack's swimming trunks, there are remnants of that sunflower idea. In the same issue of Dengeki, Kitasi also revealed that he was in charge of the Zack vs. Sephiroth scene in Crisis Core. This was because the younger developers were anxious about altering the original story from Final Fantasy VII. He also wanted to try and work Genova into the battle, but Nomura said that contradicted the original too much. In issue 397 of Dengeki PlayStation, Nomura revealed that he changed Aerith's outfit in the game because he'd already changed outfits for other characters. He chose to use white as her main color, with the white and blue representing the sky and clouds. However, when it came to Zack's color scheme, Nomura stated in the same interview that he couldn't see Zack wearing red, even though 
That was the color used for second class members of Soldier in Final Fantasy VII. Instead, he decided to retroactively change this aspect to make Zack's outfit more suitable. In a 2007 interview, Nomura said that having Sephiroth as the protagonist of Crisis Core wouldn't have worked, because he was already established as the strongest soldier in the world. As such, no conceivable enemy could lead to getting a game over. Staying with Nomura, he said in issue 953 of Famitsu that Huli, Angeal's surname, is of Greek origin and a word with relevance to trees, wood, and timber. In the 10th anniversary Ultimania, it's said that Lazard and his mother ended up being cast out by President Shinra, which is why he diverted funds from Soldier, and instead assisted Genesis and Professor Hollander as a form of revenge. However, eventually he was no longer considered useful, and ended up being used as a test subject. Ouch. In an interview with IGN in 2008, Kitasi said that Nojima's story concept for Zack had basically been cooking for 10 years since Final Fantasy VII's release, despite Zack being a rather minor character in the first game. I think that's probably enough Crisis Core info for one video, so I'll wrap it up here. However, before finishing, I'd just like to give a huge amount of credit to the Shinra Archaeology Department on Twitter, which, if you're a Final Fantasy VII fan, is a great account to follow, as they're putting out a lot of information about the FF7 compilation. I'll put links to their account and website in the description, so do check them out. Also, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up as well. And why not subscribe as well if you aren't already? Until next time, thanks for watching.